So um, now today I'm going to uh, going back to the history of the ten years and more by Hakasons. Actually, the BBCLS and BDC by Hakason meetings is now tenth anniversary, but the, the original by Hakason meeting was held in 2002, organized by Open Bio Foundation. And uh, some of you were there. And uh, the first one was in Arizona <laughs> in 2002. And uh, one month later, we moved to uh, South Africa. And uh, the next year, we moved to Singapore to standardize how to access the bioinformatics databases in different programming languages like BioPower, BioPython, BioJava, and BioRuby. And uh, after that, several other biohackathon like meeting like a nascent hackathon or uh, EU code fest or and uh, yeah I ISMB connected, both meeting connected, code fest meeting have been occurred. And uh, in 2008, we started our DBCLS by Hakasan in Japan. So the first topic of the by Hakasan meeting was the in, how to integrate the heterogeneous and the distributed data sets and uh, databases in life science. And that uh, at that time, we used the web services like SOAP, REST, very old school way to access the remote resources, but uh, it enabled us to virtually integrate uh, those distributed databases and services. And uh, workflow engines like a Taberna was uh, used to create your own workflows. And, uh, but the problem was there are no standardization between inputs and the outputs of the services. So we still needed to have a programming languages, libraries like a BioPower or BioJava, something like that to fix up the incompatibility of the data formats. And uh, interestingly, according to the paper of the Uniplot, um, the Uniplot database had already introduced RDF at the time, but we were not aware of that. <laughs> basically. So we were still using old school tools like BioMobi, BioDAS, BioSQL, and Tabella, or something like that. And the next year, we gathered again in Okinawa. And uh, the number of participants were 66 from 11 countries. And uh, we continued work to improve so the, such kind of in, incompatibility and uh, to improve the interoperability of services and workloads. And uh, we tried to implement some real world use cases, such as a sequence annotation or gene expression analysis or protein interaction analysis or glycogen related disease analysis by using invoking soap web services uh, combined with bioinformatics databases. But uh, we still realized that there are not enough services to complete those tasks. And the lack of documentation of the SOAP API is yeah, very difficult to uh, create the entire workflow. And the uh, SOAP implementation is very complex. So the, it depends on the li language library. So it, the work, the service can be used in Power, but not in Python or something like that often occurred. And uh, so incompatibility of services and formats were still there. And uh, which led us to seriously think about some, to introduce semantic framework. So the by Hackathon 2010 was the first time we by Hackathon introduced the semantic web technologies in the bioinformatics services and databases. So that means we needed to restart 
from scratch to create all the services and all the databases. Yeah, it's a tough work. But and uh, <laughs> at that time, we were very ignorant about what is the semantic web, what is the RDF means, and what is the ontology, and what is the Spark query language. So we started to run it. And uh, some guidelines for designing semantic data and the inter interoperability of resources were discussed, and uh, we created a Tokyo Manifest. So this is the beginning of the current trend of the semantic web use in bioinformatics. Okay, so then move to 2011. This year was a special for Japanese because we had a big earthquake in March 11th. And uh, so it is very hard to organize it in Tokyo because of the shortage of the electricity in summer. Uh, because all the nuclear power plant was stopped working. So many supercomputer systems needed to stop for a day or something like that. And uh, so happily, we could find a host in Kyoto University. So we organized this meeting in Kyoto and in August. And the number of participants was bit increased from 10 countries. And uh, at this time, we discussed about essential metadata and RDF models with ontologies for each life science domains. And uh, some were implemented at, at the Hackathon Week. And uh, this year, PDB started to provide their data in RDF. This is um, pioneering, pioneering work next to the Uniplot. And uh, yes. So we are starting to develop RDF designs for major bioinformatics databases. And the next year, uh, we organized the Hackathon meeting in Toyama. And uh, in this year, we developed more tools and data sets for linked data, and uh, some converters for NGS data sets like GFF to VCF. Uh, developed, uh, proposed, but uh, those uh, implementation was still very primitive because uh, we didn't still didn't know the best practice how to implement and how to make the raw data in RDF. But at the same time, we created a part of ontology. This is a sequence annotation. Uh, um, this ontology is used to annotate the location of the sequences. So you can now describe this gene is located on chromosome 2 from this position to this position or something like that by using this part ontology. And uh, at JBrowse was extended to display genome annotation taken from Sparkle endpoint. This was also a big leap towards a yeah, practical use of the semantic web technologies in general databases. And uh, next year, uh, 2013, we organized it in Tokyo. And uh, this year, <laughs> we visited the new sky tree, Tokyo sky tree. Uh, this, that, that tower is 60, yeah, Musashi. 60, 34 meters high. <laughs> and uh, we gathered a more increased number of participants, like 80 from 11 countries. And uh, we have revisited guidelines and standard, standards for developing linked data. And uh, metadata for data set description and the use of youth identifiers of URIs and the quality assessment of Sparkle endpoints are discussed. And this year, another group, GA4GH Global Alliance for Genomics and Health is, is established. And uh, our uh, RDF based uh, genome database, Togo Genome, was released. Okay, 
And uh, in 2014, we organized the Bahakasa meeting in Miyagi. And so Miyagi is a uh, one of the most severely um, destroyed uh, prefecture countries and by the earthquake in 2011. And uh, after the earthquake, the, the Tohoku Medical Mega Bank was established and uh, to rebuild the healthcare hospital system in that Tohoku region. And uh, so we visited several places recovering from tsunami disaster. And uh, that experience made us to start focusing on biomedical applications in semantic web and uh, in addition to the basic life sciences. And this year, uh, EBI started to provide RDF platform, uh, which includes six RDF datasets. And uh, in US, uh, PubChem and Mesh RDF were released. Um, I think the year is correct, but uh, Evan, if you think, is it correct? The 2014? <laughs> uh, about. <laughs> yeah, so now, um, EBI and NCBI and in Japan, we uh, seriously started to develop uh, major bioinformatics resources in RDF. And uh, at the same year, we organized a very close invitational uh, meeting called First RDF Summit for standardizing genome annotations in RDF among INSDC and Ensemble and Togo Genome because to represent the genomic annotation can be modeled in different way in RDF. So this is, this depends on the how you model the real world data. So if the ensemble and the IS, INSDC choose the different data model to represent the sequence annotation, your Spark query is not compatible with those endpoints. So we wanted to make it streamlined before we get diverse. So, and I think that the meeting was very successful and we dis uh, agreed to use the part ontology to coin, annotate the, all the uh, annotations like genes and the transfactor binding site or something like that in RDF with pardon ontology. Okay, and uh, in 2015, uh, we moved to Nagasaki. And um, the number of participants were, was increased to up to 86 from 12 countries. And the guideline for publishing open data and the FAIR principles were, was developed this year. And the introduction of common workflow language for reproducible experiments, experiment or science, and the prototyping the RDF version of genome, genome variation graph from the GA4GH project was also introduced this year. And uh, in 2015, in NBDC, our sponsor here, this building is NBDC, you know. <laughs> NBDC started to provide RDF portal, and which uh, accumulates the RDF resources produced in Japan. And uh, at that same year, Ensemble RDF was also added to the EBI RDF platform. Okay, and uh, in 2006, last year, we organized the hackathon in Yamagata Prefecture. And uh, the one, one new thing for this year was the introduction of com <coughs> competition for invitation. And uh, there were about more than 20 submissions and uh, three successful submissions were selected for invitation. 
And、uh, we also implemented J4GH activities in Japan, like a、uh, human phenotype ontology or match, ma matchmaker exchange or variation graph for Japanese genomes. And、uh, collaboration with Wikidata was started. And a trial of AI based、um, artificial intelligence application based on the RDF was started. And、uh, we had a very impressive demo of q u i c k c h a n It is、uh, <laughs> Analogy of Watson, IBM Watson, but、uh, because we are biologists, so the, the name was taken from Big Click. And、uh, <laughs> Click Chan was a very cute AI girl so, <laughs> and、uh, specialized for life sciences. And、uh, last night, Tatsuro tried to knock her again on the Slack of last year. And、uh, I cannot show the screenshot here, but、uh, she didn't answer anything. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad. So, to make the services and the good applications sustainable, sustainable is、uh, very difficult. <laughs> And the creator of the c l i c k c h a n was not be able to join this year. So, I want to make him to fix it. But <laughs> anyway, and、uh, this year,、uh, DDBJ released the official release of the INSDC RDF datasets. And、uh, another invitational only small hackathon meeting like called Second RDF Summit was、uh, organized. This one was mainly for variation genome graph. And、uh, we wanted to use the variation graph for analyzing the, how to say, Japanese genome or Chinese genome or something. So, because the reference sequence, reference genome sequence is taken from the basically Western reference,、uh, reference and、uh, we Not only we, but、uh, everyone has a specific sequence to be annotated. So, if we need to annotate Japanese specific region on the chromosome,、um, we need to split the analysis pipeline into the, the region on the different sequence and the region on, only found in Japanese. And that Is not good in the long term. So, we want to use the all combined genome graph to, anal to analyze the entire human genome. Okay. So, this year is the 10th anniversary, and、uh, we have two days of symposium from today and tomorrow. And、uh, you, as you see, the number of participants was the largest among the tens. And、uh, yes, and、uh, something new is we could invite uh, at, together uh, groups from GF4GH, the Tohoku Medical Mega Bank, and the Iwate Medical Mega Bank, and the AMED. AMED is a Um, agency for biomedical researches in Japan. So we can more focus on the, how our technology can be utilized in the biomedical and healthcare domains. And I really expect all of you will do an awesome job this week. Okay. And、uh, let me briefly introduce what we DBCLS has been doing, had been doing for 10 years. So, the original idea was how to integrate heterogeneous and distributed data databases. Now, we started from web services, but now we are using semantic web to、uh, represent the, all the data. And,、uh, Here is a brief list of、uh, part of our tools. And the, the first one, Togo Web Service, is used to search and retrieve and pass and、uh, convert entries into RTF. And、uh, you can use Togo DB to deploy your、uh, original data sets as a database. And at the same time, you can、uh, 
publish it as a RDA, and the Spark endpoint is also comes with. And the Turbo Genome is a database, genome database, completely based on the RDA and the Spark query. And the Spark list is a tiny tool to provide REST API over the Spark endpoints. So you can document how to query the Spark endpoints in Markdown language, and uh, just click publish, and uh, you will get a REST API to get JSON from the Spark endpoint. And uh, you can also embed JavaScript into the Markdowns to Mm, make the Spark query result built into beautiful JSON model. And the uh, Spark proxy is a tool to safe, safely deploy uh, your Spark endpoint, which reject or update query. So you, you can only do the select, and uh, your database is protected from the rewriting attack and uh, it also has a job scheduling so if you have uh, tons of spark query at the same time all the spark queries are stored in a queue and uh, each query are uh, seri seri um, seriously uh, executed and the results are also cached so if you have query the same spark query against the Sparkle proxy, you will get the result very quickly. And the DitoRQ mapper is a, another tool, GUI tool to configure your RDF, RDB database as a RDF database. So by using this tool, you can convert your in-house RDB data sets to expose as a Spark endpoint or RDF datasets. And uh, some of the works will be introduced in the, the today's evening session. Okay. And uh, here is a brief list of the linked data already developed in Japan. You can see the NVDC RDF portal and you can listen to the presentation of Shuichi this evening. But basically, you can find, uh, you can see INSDC, all the DNS sequences stored in the GenBank or DDBJ are already represented in RDF, and uh, all the protein structures in PDB are already represented in RDF. And the cancer genome, glycomics, and the toxical genomics also exist as a gene expression or dictionaries. Uh, yeah, provided at the NVDC RDF portal. And all those data sets are evaluated by the, our RDF guidelines. So the data sets were assigned proper types and labels and they use uh, common ontologies as much as possible. And uh, we use identifiers.org URIs to interconnect those different databases. And uh, we provide some document and Sparkle examples and the downloadable RDF data sets. So basically that's it. And uh, I have a few minutes, so I can take some comments. Thank you very much.